Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, in this video, we shall study some properties and axioms of probability. The students are advised to understand and memorize these properties. The first property is that probability of the total sample space S must be equal to 1. The proof is very simple. We are using the basic formula probability that if A is any event, then the probability of A is equal to prob N of A divided by N of S. N of A mean all possible outcomes in A and N of S mean all possible outcomes in the sample space S. Now, instead of A, if there is B, then we will write probability of B is equal to N of B divided by N of S. Now, instead of A, we have S here. So probability of S is equal to N of S divided by N of S. N of S will cancel with N of S and we get that probability of S is equal to one. The second property is that probability of an empty set must be equal to zero. To see the proof, we use the same basic formula probability that probability of A is equal to N of A divided by N of S. Now, instead of A, we have an empty set. So probability of the empty set is equal to N of empty set divided by N of S. And we know that number of all possible outcomes in the empty set must be zero. So, and zero divided by anything is zero. So we get the proof that probability of empty set is equal to zero. The third property is that if A is any event of a sample space S, then probability of A must be between zero and one. To see the proof of this property, we know that an empty set is a subset of any other set. And any event A is a subset of the total sample space. So this is universally true property. And from this we can obtain that number of all possible outcomes in the empty set must be less than or equal to number of all possible outcomes in the event A and that must be less than or equal to number of all possible outcomes in S. Multiply each of them by N of S. And now we can see that this is probability of the empty set, which is zero. N of A divided by N of S. This is basic formula for probability of A and n of s divided by n of s mean probability of the total sample space which is equal to one and we get the proof the fourth property is if we have any two events which are disjoint by disjoint we mean there will be nothing common in a and b in other words a intersection b must be empty. Then probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. To prove this property, we assume that N of A is equal to M and N of B is equal to L. It means that we suppose that in A, there are M elements, and in B, there are total L elements. Now using the basic formula of probability, 
we know that a and b are sets so their union must be a set so probability of this set is equal to n of this set number of all possible outcomes in this set divided by n of s now in a there are m elements and in b there are l elements so in a union b since they are disjoint there will be m plus l elements now from here we can write m divided by n of s plus l divided by n of s now m is n of a and l is n of b and from this we can see that n of a divided by n of s is p of a n of b divided by n of s is p of b which is the required proof in property number 5 we have any two events a and b about which we don't know whether they are disjoint or not they are any two arbitrary events in that case probability of a union b will be equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b now here note that in case if a and b are disjoint then a intersection b must be empty and probability of empty set is zero so again we will get property number 4 the last property is that probability of a complement plus probability of a must be equal to 1 to prove this property let us see an example in this example we have a sample space given by this one and let us take any subset of this sample space sample space so i am taking a which is equal to 1 2 3 then what is a complement a complement is equal to s set minus a it means that from s we have to subtract the element of a and the remaining will be a complement so a complement is equal to 4 5 6 from these two events we can see that there is nothing common so a intersection a complement is an empty set and we can see that if we take union of a and a complement we get the total sample space so these are universally true properties using these properties we can prove property number 6 as follow since a union a complement is equal to the total sample space so taking probability on both sides now a and b are disjoint they will always be disjoint therefore we use property number 4 probability of a plus probability of a complement probability of a union a complement is equal to the sum of the individual probabilities of a and a complement and now probability of s mean probability of the total sample space which is equal to 1 and we get the proof of the last property let us use these properties to solve some examples example number 1 we are given that a and b are any two events of a probability space probability of a is given which is 0.6 probability of b is given which is 0.3 and probability of a intersection b is given which is 0.2 the task is to find the probabilities number 1 a does not occur number 2 a or b occurs to solve part number 1 first of all we need to know that a does not occur mean a complement so we need to find the probability of a complement probability of a is given 
we are using the loss property that probability of a plus probability of a complement is equal to 1 and from this we can obtain probability of a complement which is 1 minus probability of a substituting the value of probability of a and simplifying we get the required solution which is 0 0.4 to solve part number two, we need to know that in any question, if there is A or B, we shall use union. It means, it means A union B. If there is A and B, then we shall use intersection. A and B means A intersection B. Here we need to find probability of A union B, which is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. All the values of these items are given. Substituting the values and simplifying, we get the solution, which is 0 0.7. Let us see this example. A class of probability has 40 mechanical engineering students and 10 computer engineering students. Half of each are day scholars and half are living in hostels. Find the probability that a student selected at random is a mechanical engineer or a day scholar. Here we can see the word is OR. So for OR, we mean to find the probability that the student is mechanical engineer, union D, day scholar. So we need to find probability of M union D, which is equal to probability of M plus probability of D minus probability of M intersection D. Now from the given question, we need to find the data. So number of all students in the class are 40 plus 10. So this sample space contains 50 outcomes. Number of all mechanical engineers is equal to 40. N of C is equal to 10 and N of D, number of all day scholars. So the, in the question it is given that half of each are day scholars. So N of D is 25 and N of M intersection D. It means those mechanical engineering students which are also day scholars. So half are day scholar, we can just divide it, divide 40 by two and this is 20. Now we need to find P of M, P of D and P of M intersection D. To find P of M, we use the basic formula probability, which is equal to N of M divided by N of S. The value of N of M is 40 and N of S is 50, we get four by five. To find P of D, this is equal to N of D over N of S. Again, we use the values from the given data, N of D is 25 and N of S is 50, so we have one over two. The last item is P of M intersection D, which is equal to N of M intersection D divided by N of S. The value of N of M intersection D is 20 and N of S is 50, so we get two by five. Now we have all the values, so putting values in equation number one, and then simplifying, we get that the probability is nine by 10. Multiplying with 100, we get that the probability is 90%. So there are 90% chances that the student selected at random must be a mechanical engineer or a day scholar. That's all.